Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Fall 2022 term at the Homestead campus. My name is Professor Maloney. Hopefully, you've heard a few good things about me. It's possible you've heard a few bad things about me. But either way, uh, I'm your professor for this um, COP 1334 class this term. Now, I'm teaching two sessions, um, both sold out um, of this C++ class this term. And I create lots of videos in my classes. So what I'm going to do is rotate between making a video that displays the uh, 1040 a.m. until 1220 p.m. class and another bunch of videos that are showing the 1230 p.m. until 210 p.m. class. They're both on Tuesday, Thursday. So the only difference will be that, like as an example, for this class overview video, I'm going to play this video, the same video in both classes, because it is the same material. Um, but when I show the syllabus, for this one, it's going to show um, reference number 5355, and that is the class that starts at 1040 a.m. and goes until 1220 p.m. Now, tomorrow or, or so, I'll make a mind tap overview video, and for that one, then I'll use the uh, 5677 reference number, and that's for my 12.30 p.m. to 2.10 p.m. class. So periodically, you know, you might look on the screen and you might say, that's my class, I got a question. So anytime you have a question, of course, just ask me to pause the video and ask your question. Um, but of course, you'll be looking, uh, you can look at your screen, you look at your syllabus, you look at um, all where my assignments are, which is a website called uh, MindTap. It's a Cengage MindTap uh, platform that I use for this class. And I'm the lead faculty at the Homestead campus, so there's actually a third um, COP 1334 class we're running this fall for the first time ever. Um, it's because I'm running these as MDC Live, and this allows non-Homestead students to, to sign up for the classes, and generally about half of my students come from outside the Homestead campus. So perhaps the, the non-Homestead students that take my class are the ones that take it without knowing anything about me, and then perhaps they don't like me, and they, rah, rah, rah. but anyway, um, bottom line is, you know, I'm a pretty nice guy, right? I'm a, I'm a nice guy. This is going to be a great class, but it's going to be a difficult class, so you're going to have a lot of work to do. Now, before I begin, and while you're still seeing me after this, this video, by the way, is going to go on for bare minimum 50 minutes, but more likely an hour to an hour and 10, possibly an hour and 20 minutes. I make lengthy videos, okay? And I play videos in virtually every one of my classes. So hopefully um, you're going to, you know, you're going to be okay with that. If you don't like that style, then you want to uh, change, you know, before the Friday, uh, the first Friday, which is August 26th, because that's the last day to drop with a full refund. So if you want to change to a different professor, if you can find one, um, then, you know, Make sure you drop me, drop this class the very first uh, day or the second day and take a new class by Friday of this ad drop week. All right. OK, so, um, yeah, this is a C++ class. And, and of course, C++ is a programming class. So most of you that are taking this class are in the NTech program uh, taking, you know, uh, perhaps cybersecurity, perhaps cloud computing perhaps data analytics, perhaps the information systems technology programs. We have all of those and a whole bunch more. And all of those require some programming classes, okay? Um, this particular class introduces you to C++. And the C++ language is an extremely important language. If you Google top languages, you know, C++ is always going to be one of the important ones to take. OK, the good thing also, though, or the good thing, I haven't said anything also yet, but the good thing about learning programming languages is that once you learn one, it's much easier to move on to a second one. OK, especially with the object oriented languages, which which you know are so popular these days. So in other words, after taking this C++ class with me, if you were to then take a C sharp, an introduction, that is introduction to C sharp, 
um, an introduction to Visual Basic, an introduction to Java, an introduction to Python. Um, you know, any language out there, really, um, you'll, you'll already have in your memory bank, as long as you were a good student and did a good job, um, that there, like, there'll be a lot of similarities. The differences are always syntactical, you know, because there's syntax with coding languages, and some are easier than others. But in any event, I welcome you to this class, but understand it's going to be a difficult class uh, for the best of you. I mean, you know, the, the most intelligent person in this class uh, will have to work very hard to make an A. That's just, it's, it's understood that programming classes require a lot of work. If you're not quite as knowledgeable about computers and you feel like, geez, is this, you know, can I take this class? Of course you can take it. You know, you have to make sure though that in a class like this, that you have ample hours every day of the week to work on the class. So when I get to the syllabus, which I'm gonna again be showing you in a little while, um, but basically in this class, there's, um, let's see, there's eight chapters and there are, seven of the chapters have programming exercises as assignments. And in those seven chapters, for six of them, there are six assignments and for one of them, there's five. So basically that means you have six sixes or 36 and five is 41 programming exercises. Every one of those programming assignments will take most of you an hour to do. Again, I'm saying, you know, every one, chapter two will be easier than chapter three, which will be easier than chapter four, which will be easier than chapter five, which will be easier than chapter six, which will be easier than chapter seven, which will be easier than chapter eight. There's lots and lots of topics that we have to go through in a class like this. So I'm providing PowerPoint slides for all eight chapters, and I'll show you where they are in the class. You know, again, momentarily, this is a class overview. Um, that's my mother-in-law, but I can't talk to her. Hang it up. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of things you're going to have to do, and you have to do it, you know, as soon as you can. All right. Uh, meaning the readings for each assignment, the PowerPoints for each assignment, preparing to do the work for each assignment. You know, you can't. So one thing in this class is that all of the programming assignments you have access to from uh, for a bare minimum of three weeks, but it's more, it's closer to four or four and a half weeks. But that's to do like there's three exams. Exam number one is going to cover chapters two and three, which are in the book called units two and three. So that means there'll be 12 programming exercises. They're all going to be available. I think I make them available on the second day of class. They're not due until September 26th or so. And then the next day, September 27th, is your first exam. And that will cover those 12 programming exercises. Okay. It'll also cover, you know, other things, but, but, Basically, it's the content of units two and three or chapters two and three, however you want to phrase that. And then you have to make sure that rather than say, well, gee whiz, they're not due till September 26th. So my gosh, I'll fall asleep for a while and I'll do it. You know, I'll, I'll start the activities, the, the exercises, the readings, the PowerPoints. I'll, I'll look at all that stuff, you know, uh, starting in week two, maybe starting in week three. I'm a pretty sharp dude. Yeah, of course but you got to do everything and you have to do it fast. Okay. Then you need to review it. You need to do it again. You get to submit. So there are eight quizzes in this class. There are 41 programming exercises and there are three exams and that's all done at a site called MindTap. The MindTap site for this class is where 98% of your class grade comes from. So that means you need to buy your access code for the class by the end of the first week, okay? The only thing you do in Blackboard for this class is your bio post. Now, 
You still go to Blackboard though to check your grades. There will be a My Grades link in Blackboard for you, and you click that to check your grades. Um, but a lot of your grades have to be done manually. Some things are done automatically. But either way, the grades and the category breakdown for grades are done at the Blackboard site. So in the case of MindTap, where you do all your work, again, 98% of your work, the grades won't be categorized, meaning you're going to have three exams, which are each worth 20% of your class grade, by the way. So 60% of your class grade comes from three exams. And then those 41 programming exercises that I talked about, um, they represent about 30% of your class grade. So that's 60 and 30 is 90. Then there are eight quizzes, one for each of the eight chapters you're doing in this class. So 1%, that is for each. So obviously the quizzes are not worth near as much as the programming exercises, which are not worth near as much as the exams. The exams though, are based on the programming exercises. You don't take any exams in this class that are true, false, or multiple choice. Everything in here, in this class, for your exams will be based on the programming exercises that you create in the chapters. So the first exam covers units two and three. So it doesn't mean it's all unit two, nor is it all unit three. It's those two units. The second exam is for units um, four, five, and six, or again, chapters four, five, and six. So in this case, there'll be eight and eight and eight. That's 24 programming exercises. You have four weeks to do it, yes, but 24 exercises. And chapter two is easier than chapter three, and chapter three is easier than chapter four, and then now we're chapter five and also chapter six. So, because everything gets harder and you have 24 programming exercises, you also have three quizzes for, for that period of time. But your program, uh, your exam two will cover units three, uh, sorry, units four, five, and six programming wise, not multiple choice and not true false. Okay. So you must do very well on the programming exercises to do well in this class. Okay. Now, the quizzes are multiple choice and they are true false, but you can use your book to get information on those. And I'll again show that, uh, probably that one is uh, part of my mind tap overview. Maybe I won't show that part today. But either way, um, so there's a lot to do. I'm gonna now take my picture away so we can start doing our work. Um, well, work meaning I'll share my screen with you guys. Okay, share, hide that. And now I'm gonna bring you over. Remember what I said, um, in this class, okay, there are two, let me go to student preview. There are two sections, okay? So you see here, it's 5355. This is my class that runs from 1040 a.m. until 1220 p.m. But, and listen closely, if you are in section 5677, your class starts at 1230 and goes until 210. So when I talk about 1040 to 1220, or 1040 to 1140 for my required class, in the late class, that means 1240 to 140, uh, 1230, sorry, 1230 to 210. Uh, so it's 1230 to 130 for my required class, and then there's an optional class, kind of uh, optional office hours section. But anyway, we'll talk about that in class. But anyway, so here is what your navigation menu in Blackboard. So right now I'm in our class, COP 1334, 2227 means it's the fall 2022 term. 5355 again means my 1040 a.m. until 1220 p.m. class. I also have a 5677, which is a 1230 p.m. until 210 p.m. class. Both classes are an hour and 40 minutes officially. Um, I make the required portion of class one hour. So it's 1040 until 1140 on every Tuesday and Thursday that you must be in class. And on the three exam days though, they're done during class time only. You're not allowed to do them any other time. And I'll be at the MindTap site, you'll be at the MindTap site. I'll see when you start the exam, I'll see when you finish the exam, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So, uh, but on the three exam days, I give you one hour and 40 minutes for every exam. So that means on for the 10.40 uh, a.m. class, then on exam days, you're 
in class potentially anyway from 10:40 a.m. until 12:20 p.m. the three exam days okay for the late class you're potentially in class from 12:30 p.m. until 2:10 p.m. on those three exam days all right all right so that's um, um you know a little bit more in the class but anyway students start here is the well sorry the home page link is where i put course announcements okay i'll be having an announcement that will be posted and you'll see before class starts telling you that you have to go to the collaborate ultra required live class sessions link in blackboard to get to where you will be to be watching this video with me on the first day of class meaning august 23rd okay so as i put announcements they're always put in the home page that's the only thing i do with the home page is announcements okay then there's a students start here this is the thing I want you to then understand is very, very, very important. I even put it above the syllabus. Student start here is where you have to go to link up with a site called MindTap. That's a, it's not really a site. I mean, it is a site, but it's a platform. We're using, and that's a Cengage product. Cengage is like McGraw Hill um, and Pearson. They're just publishers, book publishers, but they all create platforms for professors to use for the assignments they give students in class okay so i use cengage for my cgs 1060 class i use cengage for my cop 1334 class i use cengage for my a plus hardware a plus software classes i use um, cengage for my network essentials classes our speech professors use cengage products for their speech classes some english professors use cengage uh, products so, you know, depending on your classes dictates what you use. But for this class, you're using Cengage MindTap. I've already created the website at the MindTap site for our class, which is where 98% of your class work is done. Okay. Um, and so I'll read this thing here. So it says, by, let me see how big I got this right now. Let me make it 125. Okay. I right, just, I mean, it's hard to say how big it'll show up on, you know, on via the little camera. But anyway, so students click here to go to MindTap to do your work. Well, you also, though, click here to register. So on day two, which is August 25th, Thursday, August 25th, I'm going to come here and demonstrate how you, and you're going to be doing it with me, register at the MindTap site. For those of you that are, you know, sharp and you think you can do that on your own, you're welcome. As long as you have your access code, you can do it on Tuesday, August 23rd, if you want to or on Wednesday, August, August 24th. But on Thursday, the 25th, you are required to do it. So let me read. By the end of week one, you need to have registered at the MindTap site for this class. To do so, you click the link above. That's this one right here. Students click here to go to MindTap to do your work. Um, and then either enter your logon credentials if you have an existing MindTap account. If you don't have an existing MindTap account, you click the Create Account, which you're going to get. And I'm going to, again, create a separate video to demonstrate this, all right? Um, so from there, you'll enter the required information and proceed to the next step. It'll take you no more than five minutes to register. But let's say it takes 10, even 15, but it won't take more than five or six minutes, all right? All right. So for those of you that have purchased your COP1334 access code, and I'm going to show you where that access code is, but basically it's in the bookstore. You have to buy it. You have to buy your uh, access code from the bookstore. You don't get a physical book. And there's an ebook, an electronic book at the MindTap site. And I'll be showing that um, in class on Thursday, the 25th, okay, with my MindTap overview video. So for those of you that have purchased your access code by the time you read this video, or if you do it later on Tuesday the 23rd, or if you do it on Wednesday the 24th, you can enter that at the link, meaning the access code at the link right here. When you click this link here, it'll enter, ask you to enter your access code if you have one. If you don't have one, by the end, of, well, by the start of day two, then you must buy it by the end of that first week, which means it must be done by Monday. Monday will be the 29th, okay? So Monday the 29th is the end of week one. If you don't have the money or you don't have your, your, um, your financial aid funds available still, well, then you might be able to get a seven-day trial. 
Some people say they get a 14 day trial, but normally it's a seven day trial, but only if you've never had a Cengage MindTap account before. So if you had a trial access for let's say CGS 1060 as an example, the intro to computers class, then you may not get a free seven day trial for this one. And you must, must, must start working on the first day of week two, which is Tuesday, August 30th at the MindTap site. If you can't do that, you need to drop the class, okay? All right, so um, I'm not gonna go to this one right now, all right? But I'll have another video before the class on Thursday the 25th showing you that, all right? So syllabus. Now, this is the syllabus and tentative schedule of activities. Again, this one is for 5355. It'll be the exact same information, but ending in 5677 for my 12.30 p.m. until 2.10 p.m. class. This 5355 is for my 1040 a.m. until 1220 p.m. class. So I'll click this link to open it. Otherwise, you can download the Word document. And of course, you can download the Word document anyway, as long as you have Office on your computer, right? So by clicking that, and remember, I'm in your student preview, right? So here is all the stuff I've got for the class. So um, Professor Maloney here. My email. If you have questions, if you have a question for me, do not call my office. I'm working remotely. Uh, I'll be in my office probably on Fridays, but um, I'm working remotely. Um, I have live office hour sessions in Collaborate Ultra every Tuesday and every Thursday from 1140 a.m. until 1210 p.m. for the first class, for the early class. And from, um, let's see, from 1.30 until 2 o'clock in the second class. 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. in the second class, okay? All right. So this class, and so every class, the optional, or the office hour sessions are optional. They're optional means you don't have to go to them. You do not have to go to them. Um, but if it's an exam day, you're gonna, there are no optional office hours because you're gonna be in class taking the exam all the way until 12.20 for the early class and all the way until 2.10 for the later class, okay? All right, so this class is running under MDC Live, the MDC Live modality, okay? And this modality requires you to attend. It's a synchronous, it's synchronous. Synchronous means you must attend the live office hour sessions that I, uh, live required class sessions, sorry, that I've created for you. And for the early class, these sessions go from, let me just scroll down here to see it again. I don't see it right here. Yeah, da, 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 da. Oh, go, 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 go. What's going on here? I'm missing something. Mm -hmm. Sorry about this. Oh, right up here in the first one, class times. Okay, so 11, uh, 1040 to 1140 in the morning for the first class, the Tuesday, Thursday, section 5355 class, you are required to be in class from 1040 a.m. until 1140 a.m. Now, sometimes though, I will have videos that are literally an hour 10, hour 20, possibly even more long. I know, I know. Um, and, but that's like, what I do is I try to have all the things I would talk about if I'm in at the class face to face. And because it's MDC live, it's synchronous. So I'm sort of face to face, although now I'm obviously sharing my screen, uh, but I always start by letting you guys see me for five or 10 minutes. Then I always am showing whatever I want to demonstrate. But point being again, you're required to be here. So regardless of how boring the videos are, they're there. And the good thing is I let them be up there for the entire, you know, like once it's posted, uh, it'll be posted to a, a folder in Blackboard called Course Videos Created by Professor Maloney. And those will be up there from once they're made until the end of the term, okay? And at least half of them, really a lot more than half of them, will be programming examples. Okay, programming examples. So the good thing is you can play them over and over again. Now, if it's an hour long and you get bored with that, well, fine, you can look for whatever might that, that you're looking for. So as long as you're a sharp person and you've read your material and whatever, you, you can just skip around looking for certain things. 
uh, but bottom line is you are required to be in class from uh, 1040 a.m. to 1140 a.m. if you're in section 5355 and you're required to be in class from 1230 p.m. until 130 p.m. if you're in class section um, 5677. All right. All right. If you miss three of my live sessions, by the way, I reserve the right to drop you and I will drop you. Okay. All right. So um, that's that. That is that. Now, you, during the term, though, you must also be logged into the MindTap class website every week, and you must be doing the reading activities. You must be doing work every week. If you don't do work, at least an assignment every week, I also reserve the right to drop you, and I will. Okay, I will. Because I give you so much time to do these assignments, you know, you need to be on it because you need to understand with 41 programming exercises that the class is officially 16 weeks long. So if you if you eliminate the first week and you eliminate the exams week, there's really 14 weeks, you know, of, of you doing work. 14 weeks and there's 30, uh, 41 programming exercises. Three of those though days are exams. So now it's it's uh, 14 weeks less a week because you know one exam, but there's three exams is one and a half weeks. So it's down to 12 and a half weeks of basically you being able to do assignments. So you know that's that's three plus programs that you're building every week continually from week two through week 13, uh, week 15. All right. Okay. Here is your textbook information. It's Malik is the author, C++ Programming, From Problem Analysis to Program Design. It's the eighth edition. Now, this link right here that I'm hovering on, where it says Course Materials Results Page, bookstore.com, this is for the Miami-Dade College Homestead Campus Bookstore. So I'm going to click the link right now, and it will open up at the eFollet site, which is the bookstore for Homestead. Okay. Now, again, this one is COP 1334-5355. If you're in my late class, you click the same link in your syllabus, and it'll bring you to the same um, COP, the same 1334, but it'll be 5677. And it'll be the same book, though, because it's the same class. All right. All right. So you can buy your book here. It's about 80 bucks. <clears throat> uh, I can't guarantee the price, but it's about. Um, and you guys then won't be buying the physical book, but you're going to get an um, a access code. And if you buy it from this website, okay, you won't get it right away. That's the bad thing about doing it this way. Um, what will happen is they will, let's say you, you, you buy it, you put it in your shopping cart and you buy it. Um, I'll, I'll just say at noon on the 23rd of August. Okay, so you buy it at noon on the 23rd of August. Um, it takes them up to a day to then reply. They'll ask you for your email as part of the checkout process, uh, the MDC email, that is, your mymdc.net email. And they will then email the access code to you, you know, within 24 hours. Okay, but you won't get it instantly. That's not a bad thing, but I'm just letting you know, okay? If you go to the bookstore, the Homestead Campus bookstore in person, they will give you, they, well, of course, you buy the access code and then they will give it to you after you pay for it and you walk out and you have your access code. So in person, you get it right away. If you, if you do it via the electronic, the electronic website, then it might take up the 24 hours to get it, okay? But all you do is you click that link there. If you're, oops, ah, oh, shoot, let me just shut down my... All right, courses, and I was in 5355. Upcoming courses, technically it's not time for the class yet. All right, 5355 five, again, I'll do my next video for 5677, seven, and I'll open my syllabus again, and I'll open it again. All right, so then, I don't know what happened here, what do I have to get? Anyway, all right, so um, yeah, the book, that was the link for the book right here, okay? All right. If you have questions for the bookstore, you can call this number there. You can also email them, but don't waste time. You got to get this book access code the first week of class. All right. Okay. 
So course description, you can read that. Course objectives, you can read that. Reading, I'll, I'll read this part. It is essential that you have the MindTap access code by the second day of class because this is a challenging class. And trust me, time will fly. You can get the access code from the MDC Camp uh, Homestead Bookstore in person or online as shown above. Students will be responsible for all material covered in class and all chapters assigned in the textbook. Um, and those chapters are chapters one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. Chapter one does not have any programs. It has a quiz though. Chapter two, you're going to be assigned six programming exercises and the chapter two quiz. Chapter three, there'll be the chapter three quiz and six programming exercises. Chapter four, same thing. Chapter four quiz and six programming exercises. Chapter five, same thing. Chapter five quiz. And chapter uh, and six, chapter five programming exercises. Chapter six, same thing. Chapter six quiz and six programming exercises from chapter six. Chapter seven is the only one that's slightly different. There's the chapter seven quiz, but only five programming exercises from chapter seven. And chapter eight is the chapter eight quiz and six programming exercises. Okay. All right. So, most of the work in this class, though, will be the programming assignments. Okay, that's for sure what you're going to be doing. And you're going to have to make sure that you work on these things. And you can't just go to work on them until you've read the chapter. It's easier to read the chapter's PowerPoint than to read the chapter's text. But I say start with the PowerPoint and then review the ebook as necessary to help you with the programming exercises that you're doing, okay? All right. Um, I also created an optional discussion forum for students only to work together if you want to. It's in Blackboard, okay? So it's an optional discussion forum. I will not be participating in it, but you guys can do it, all right? All right. Now, and then I say, while I encourage working in small groups on your assignments, even in class, I do not mind that. But each student's responsible for doing their own coding. It is perfectly fine for two or three students to work on the assignments together as long as they all type, as long as they are all typing the code they agreed to use. But if plagiarism occurs, each student involved will receive a zero on the assignment. Okay. Here's the exams. I mentioned 60% of your class grade. There's three exams. The homework assignments are what I call the programming exercises. There's 41 of them. Uh, quizzes. 8% of your class grade. So that means each one is only 1% of your grade. There are eight quizzes. And your bio post is worth 2%. So 60 and 30 is 90, and 8 is 98, and 2 is 100. Okay? All right. Now, makeup policy. I charge a 20%, an automatic 20%, 20% penalty, any assignment not submitted on time. But if you do not, take your unit one exam on, I believe it's September 27th, or you do not take your unit two exam, which I believe is on November the 8th, and you do not send me an email <clears throat> in advance telling me, hey, I can't take the exam today, I, I will take it late, um, you'll get a 20% penalty, and you can only do it within one week of the original date, okay? And then the last exam, the one that's on Tuesday, December 13th, um, it's from 10.40 a.m. until 12.20 p.m. for the early class, and it's from 12.30 p.m. until 2.10 p.m. for the late class, and you cannot make that exam up at all because this is exams week. Tuesday, December 13 is exams week. Um, so the last day to submit assignments for this class is technically Thursday, December the 8th, but I let you also post them on Friday, December the 9th, but no late assignments on any uh, work not done by the end of day on Friday, December. Let me make sure it's Friday, December 9th. Friday. Yeah, Friday, December 9th. Okay. And this, by the way, the way from the 12th through the 16th, the next week, that's called final exams week. Final exams week. For this class, it's a Tuesday, Thursday class, and I'm a senior professor, so mine are always the first day on exams week. All right. All right. 
Uh, I mentioned uh, attendance is required. If you miss three of my required live class sessions, that's the hour portion. You know, that's 1040 until 1140 if you're in the early class in the morning. And it's um, 1230 until 130 p.m. if you're in the late class. Okay, if you miss three, I reserve the right to drop you. If you do not like this class, or you, you don't think, you think it's not necessarily hard, well, whatever. If you think it's too hard, or you think uh, you don't really like uh, the way I am you know, showing you things in the class so far, if you want to drop this class, again, um, I mentioned earlier in this, um, discuss in this video, that you must do so by the very first Friday meaning Friday, August 26th. That's the last day to drop the class and get a full refund. The last day to drop the class and get a W is Halloween day, Monday, October 31st. Make sure again, I try to check these things as I go. Yeah, Monday, October 31st is the last day for you to drop the class, which means after Monday, October 31st, uh, I may not drop people if they then missed more than three classes because at that point you know it's already whatever number of weeks left in the class is probably about six so we're about into week 10 so if you haven't if you're failing the class you'll just fail it you know unless you can pull it up in the last five or six weeks but obviously i will say because i've already mentioned twice now about people failing um in my classes even in my programming classes, generally half my students make A's, okay? Generally half my students make A grades. Doesn't mean my class is easy. I think my class is very hard, very challenging, a lot of work, but if you do your work, you can get an A, all right? All right, so um, again, this is just saying the same thing. It's a synchronous class. So I'm just talking about what you have to do. There is one holiday this term for you guys, and that's Thanksgiving. So uh, Thursday, November 24th is not a class day. All right. Thursday, November 24th is not a class day. Here's the course competencies. Um, you know, you're going to be able to do these things as long as, of course, you do your work. And then at the end of the syllabus, meaning right where I'm hovering right now, where I'm at, tentative assignment schedule subject to change. But I list here every assignment due date for the entire term. It doesn't mean they're not going to change, okay? But I'm going to kind of go through a little bit of this now, even though my video is already about 40 minutes in, 38 minutes in anyway, okay? All right. So let's just look at the start. So week one, August 23 to August 29. Review all links and materials in the start here link. Get your MindTap access code, see syllabus. Well, that's a, on top of the, this is the syllabus, but you know, atop, on top. Read chapter one. I'll show you where this is since I'm saying read chapter one. Um, but it's you can only do it after you have your MindTap access code because it's an e-book, remember, e-book. Review the syllabus and tentative schedule of activities. That's this. Post your bio in the Blackboard discussion forum. So I'll show you this in the next few minutes. Take pre-course assessment. I'll show you that on Thursday the 25th. Take unit one quiz. It's graded, it counts. You can take it two times. It's graded on the 100 point scale, but at the end of the term, because of categories, each quiz counts as 1% of your final class grade. So if you take the unit one quiz and you get a 90, then you take it a second time, let's say you get an 84, the 90 would count. So you take the unit one quiz, you get a 58, Take it again and you get 100, the 100 would count. You take the unit one quiz, you get an 85. You take it again, you get an 85. The 85 will count, okay? But you can take each one two times. Um, I, again, strongly recommend that what you do is you start by reading the PowerPoints, review the PowerPoint slides, then go to the, the, the chapter or the unit, you know, in the ebook. And with, at the, uh, on, in each unit, Go to the summary first, right? Summary first. Then look for things in the chapter that, that you want to look at in more, uh, more detail, right? But anyway, so the bio must be posted by August 29th. That is Monday, August 29th. So that is the very last, that's day seven basically of week one, okay? All right. Then you must also take this pre-course pre assessment. It's ungraded. This is at the MindTap site. Um, but we're trying to 
always compare. You know, what do students at the Homestead campus know about C++ in this case before taking the class, okay? And then at the end of the term, I'm going to ask you to take a post-course assessment to see what you've then learned, all right? Anyway, unit one quiz, you can take two times. It's due September 7th, all right? So bio post, day seven of week one, um, and then the unit one quiz, day seven of week two. Basically, it means you can do it to, uh, actually, I forget if the seventh is Monday or Wednesday now. Let's see. It's the seventh. So really, I'm giving you from the 23rd, so two weeks, two full weeks and a day, okay, to do the unit one quiz, right? And then the next uh, boxes of information, weeks two through five, from August 30 until September 27, you can now already start working on chapter two and chapter three programming exercises, chapter two and chapter three quizzes. Again, they're not due until September 26, September 26, September 26, and September 26. But look at what it says. Read chapters two and three from MindTap, okay? Or book, I should have said ebook. Well, MindTap is the ebook, sorry. But anyway, uh, you know, read the chapters, but start with the PowerPoint, okay? And I'll show you where the PowerPoint is pretty soon. And then do the first six unit two programming exercises. So that's 2-1, 2-2, 2-3, 2-4, 2-5, and 2-6. There are six of them. And then the same with unit three. 3 1, 3 2, 3 3, 3 4, 3 4, 3 5, and 3 6. They're all due the same day. In other words, each section is due the same day. Okay. So then unit two quiz and unit three quiz, all of these things. So there's six, 12, there's 14 things in here. From here to here, there are 14 things. Now, out of those 14 things, the programming exercises are by far the most important because your exams are literally based on all the, you know, the programming exercises that you do, um, where quizzes are just basically memorization. And in this class, you don't even need to memorize it because I let you use your book, and again, the ebook, okay? But you still have to do them, right? So you have 14 things to do between September 20, uh, sorry, between August 30th and September 26th. And then the next day you have the exam. So really, I guess I should say you have 15 things to do, 12 programming exercises, two quizzes, and then an exam that's worth by itself 20% of your class grade, okay? And the exam is uh, virtually during live class hours. So for the early class, it's 1040 a.m. start. For the late class, it's 1230 p.m. start. Uh, for the early class, it goes all the way until 1220. See, so you get, in this case, 100 minutes okay for the late class starts 12 30 but it goes to 210 so you get 100 minutes on tuesday september 27th you must come to class you must click my student start here link in blackboard to go to mindtap and i will be monitoring everyone that's at mindtap when you start the exam when you finish the exam and you must uh, tell me when you start when you finish even though I can see when you've started and when you finish. All right. Okay. So that's the exam. Then weeks six through 11, starting September 27th. So the same day you're doing your, your uh, units two and three exam is the day you can also start working on units four, five, and six. So now again, it's three chapters or three units instead of two. So first thing, read units four, five, and six from MindTap ebook. How's that how I'll phrase it now? Then there are six programming exercises from unit four, six more from unit five, six more from unit six. Remember when it says four one to four six, five one to five six, six one to six six. There are six in each of those. So there's 18. Then there's three quizzes, that's 21. Then the exam. So there's 22 things to do for, from units four, five, and six. Okay. Everything except the exam is due on the on the 7th of November. November 7 at 11.59 p.m. And then the exam, again, must be done during our live class session, but rather than it being 10.40 to 11.40 for the early class and 12.30 to 1.30 for the late class, you get the additional uh, 40 minutes and there's no optional office hour. So in other words, you, again, you get 100 minutes for the exam, but only if you start it right at 10.40. 
at 12.20, it is due and it ends, okay? All right, and then the last units of work, you have units seven and eight. So it was the first one was two and three, the next one, four, five, and six, and then seven and eight. And with seven, there's only five programming exercises. I shouldn't say only because they're still hard. And then six for unit eight. So uh, six and five is 11, two quizzes. 11 and two is 13. And then the last day of class, meaning the first day of finals week, unit three exam, Tuesday, December 13. All right? All right. Now, I'm going to get out of the preview for now. Okay? Out of the preview. And now I'm going to go over to show you a couple other things. Um, so here's the required uh, uh, ultra, uh, required live class sessions in Collaborate Ultra. So you click the Collaborate Ultra required live class session in our class. Again, if you're in the late class, it's in the same spot, the same thing, the fourth uh, link down. And then you click uh, this link right here. So you click it. And then when you're over here, you'll see two links. One will say required live class day sessions. One will say optional live office hour sessions. Now, the live class day sessions will say they start at 1040 in the morning and they go till 1220 in the afternoon. But the reason it does this is because on three days, there's a 1220. So they put the late date. But technically, every class other than the three exam ones stop at 1140. But like I said, a lot of times my videos, like this video is going to be over an hour which means on day one, when I play this video, plus I'm going to be talking. So it will be in class for at least an hour and 10 to hour and 20, maybe even an hour and 30 minutes. But anyway, um, this one that says COP 1334 fall 2022 class overview, this is a special session. I, every time I do a video, I have to create a session for it, but it disappears then. So this, once I stop the session in about 12 more minutes, this thing will be over, okay? It'll be over and it won't show up here. But let me just click on the required live class day sessions now. So I click it. Now everything underneath it are different every day that we have a session. So as an example, um, the first one is 823, 1040 to 823, 1040, uh, 1140. See, so it's one hour. It doesn't go to the 1220. The second, so that's on Thursday, sorry, Tuesday the 23rd. Then on Thursday the 25th, it goes from 1040 until 1140. Again, for the late class, it goes from 12.30 until 1.30 for both of them, okay? But it doesn't mean they're going to end then because I may give you days where you're out a little early, but many days you're going to be in late um, because my videos will go a long time, okay? Sometimes. Anyway, so that's 8.23 and 8.25. Then the next Monday, uh, next Tuesday is also a one-hour session. Then the next... Uh, the Thursday, the second Thursday is also one hour. And then the next Tuesday is one hour. Then the, um, uh, anyway, I'll just go down to the first exam. So 927 um, is the first exam. Okay, September 27. And you see in this class, it says till 1220. All the others you're seeing see, uh, say until 1140. And for the late class, it'll say until 210 p.m. Okay. And then the uh, November 8th is the next exam. So this one will say till 12.20 p.m. if you're in the early class. If you're in the late class, it'll say till 2.10 p.m. The others say 11.40, 11.40, 11.40, or 12.30. And then the last class day, 12.13, will say until 12.20 p.m. because that's the third exam, all right? Okay, then there's an optional live office hour sessions link. So like, oh, I'm sorry, 11.24, which is Thanksgiving, I, there's no class, so there's no 11.24 in here, okay? All right, so now, the optional live office hour sessions. There are fewer of these. What's going on? Ah, let me go up here, see what's happening. All right, let's see. This one, required. Okay, okay here's the optional. So the optionals, so... Anytime there's an exam, so like there's an exam on 927, so there's no optional class on 927 because the exam, you know, the optional uh, office hour sessions are only 30 minutes long. Um, so there's no exam, when there's an exam, there's no office hour session. So 927, there's no session. 11.8, there's no session because there's an exam. And 12.13, there's no session. So the last optional 
office hour session ends on Thursday, December 8th, okay? And then, of course, again, also 1124, there's not. So there's four less sessions for optional office hour sessions because of what you're having to do, all right? Okay, so that's that. Now, the next one is REPL IT. So you're going to have to create a link or create a, um, a username at REPL IT from this link right here. You're going to click REPL.IT. Uh, I'll probably do this in class either, I'll probably on day two. Day two, meaning Thursday, uh, August 25th, okay? So that you can do that there too. All right, but anyway, so for now, I'll just kind of show it to you. This is REPL, and REPL is a site where, where you can create for free. You can create a free account, and then you can create REPLs based on templates. So you're going to be able to do a C++. This is what you're going to be doing, C++. But you can do Python. You can do HTML. You can do Node.js. You can do Java. You can do C Sharp. You can do lots and lots. Ruby. I didn't mention Ruby at the start of the, my lecture, but you know Ruby as well. So there's a lot you can do. But in here, we're going to be doing C++. Okay. Uh, and we're going to be doing C++. Um, I don't know if we'll use legacy. I'll have to verify now because they made a few changes here. So. Uh, probably this first C++, right? But anyway, we'll do that in class on Thursday in addition to my MindTap overview on Thursday. So I'll close that one out. And then um, course videos created by Professor Maloney. So this video that I'm creating today will be the first video in here, but right now there's nothing in here, so I won't click it, but it'll be in here before class begins on August the 23rd. PowerPoint slides, I told you right here. So these are already populated. So there's eight chapters or eight units, eight modules. They call them lots of things, but that means that's all the material. So if you want to review chapter five PowerPoint or module three PowerPoint or unit one PowerPoint, I just said them three different ways, just click the links and you've got them. Okay. So that's that. My grades is where you go to find uh, how you're doing in the class. Okay. This is Blackboard. So you click your My Grades to see what your grade average is any given time you want to see it. Discussion forums. So there's a bio post. But first, I'll say the students working here. This is the one I said you guys can create. It's optional. I will not participate. This is you guys talking to each other if you want to. I do not suggest that you share personal information, like throwing your phone number in there so everyone can see it. I mean, it's up to you. But I don't think that's a good idea because, you know, there are um, uh, up to 30, 30 or 35. God, I think they even increasing. I think it's up to 35 of you in here. And, and I know everyone's a good person, but still, you shouldn't share information to everyone, uh, in my opinion. All right. Anyway, so that is if you guys want to talk, though. You just read that. And, and then if you want to create a thread, you just click it and create a thread. But this one you must do. So let's see, read this one. So post your required. So it's required. Two paragraph, bio post. But note, two paragraphs means four to six sentences in each paragraph. It's due August 29th. You must include your name. Well, that's easy. Your major. Hopefully that's easy. What you like to do. Hopefully that's easy. And what you see yourself doing maybe in five years. Maybe where you see yourself living in five years. Anything else needed to make sure that your post is two full paragraphs long. You must also say hello to at least one other student. In other words, after, you have to make your post first, by the way. It's a create post first before you get to play. So you create your post, put your information. Then you also have to reply to at least one other student and ask him or her a question. And finally, in your bio post, you must also include your picture. If you don't include your picture, if you don't include two paragraphs, if you don't include whatever, you'll lose points. It's worth 2% of your final class grade. That's a lot of points. So ideally, you want to make 100. To earn full points, you must include everything as stated above, and that includes a picture. And I don't want a picture of your dog or your cat. You have to be in the picture. It can be you with your family, you with your friends. I don't care, but you must be in the picture. All right? So I'll, sh I'll click to show you mine. I put mine out there early for you guys. So click it. Scroll up. All right. So hello, everybody. And then, you know, you can read this, but this is, you know, even though I set it up as three paragraphs, um, but you have to give me four to six sentences 
in at least two separate paragraphs, okay? As long as you do that. So I'll only talk about the last one, which is my family. I've been married for 24 years. Oh, she was 25 years, silly me. And my wife and I have two boys. Jared's 24, Caleb's 22. Um, so I shouldn't say boys, I guess I should say men, but anyway, they've been with us for 24 and 22 years. Jared graduated from the University of Central Florida in December of 2020 with a Bachelor of Science in Aerospace Engineering. And Caleb graduated uh, with a Bachelor of Science in Forensic Science and a minor in Chemistry in December of 2021, so the next year. Jared just accepted, just accepted, about a month ago now, um, a Marine Systems Engineering Officer position with the Royal Canadian Navy. I'm Canadian. Jared and Caleb are dual citizens because I'm Canadian. That makes them automatically Canadian. Um, my wife, by the way, is Nigerian. So we have a Canadian man, a Nigerian woman, and two sons that are our sons. We call them Americans, but they're also Canadians. Anyway, so Jared is the first one. Uh, Jared is moving. We're moving him to Canada on September the 7th. But don't worry, we're having class on December 8th. I'll have the class from the hotel room. And he is swearing in to the Royal Canadian Navy as a Marine, as a Marine Systems Engineering Officer. That's an amazing, amazing accomplishment. And he's doing that on Friday, December, uh, September, Friday, September 9th. Okay. Uh, after his swearing in, they're going to fly him to uh, Montreal, and then they're going to put him in a cab or whatever to send him over to a place called uh, Saint Jean sur Richelieu. Quebec is French, uh, and he'll have to start his officer basic training and then language training. And it's an eight-year stint, so he's got lots of things to do, including tons and tons of training on Canadian Navy ships. All right. The second one is my son, Caleb. Caleb sent me um, a thumbnail. <laughs> I don't know. This is a beautiful picture, but unfortunately, I only had the thumbnail portion when I did it. So obviously, I stretched it and you can see that it's all blurry. But anyway, so Caleb graduated in December 2021, and he also just accepted a job offer. Um, and by the way, Jared's job offer was just accepted, but he had been working as a quality engineer at a company called Horbiger Corporation in Pompano Beach, Florida, um, until about three weeks ago when he resigned because he had, uh, a week before that, accepted the Royal Canadian Navy offer. And he started applying, by the way, with the Royal Canadian Forces um, back in February of 2021. So it took like 15 months to get the position and, and that included going up to Toronto and passing aptitude tests, doing very, very well in aptitude tests, physical tests, interview tests or interviews and uh, medical. All right. And then Caleb um, just accepted a full time teaching position as a seventh grade science teacher at Broward County Public Schools. And Caleb's at uh, Silver Trail Middle School in Pembroke Pines as a full-time science teacher. So we're very, very proud of our boys. And that's my beautiful, beautiful wife, Eva. All right, that's that. So that was that one. Let's see. Oh, wait, let me go back to your views, just in case I want to see anything else quickly. All right, yada, 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 yada. So my grades, discussion forms. Now, so MDC library, real quickly. MDC library, uh, the reason I have this up is if you click it, you have a link. So if you don't have Office on your computer, you know, you don't need, like in this uh, class, you're not going to be writing any papers. I don't require you to do stuff like that. But Office 365 Student Advantage gives you, basically, it's Office 365 Pro Plus. So if you don't have that on your computer, and whether you have a Windows computer or a Mac, if you have a Chromebook, you can't download anything on a Chromebook. That's a Windows product. They just, you know, they absolutely hate Windows, so they won't do it. But if you have a Mac, you can. If you have a Windows computer, you can. All right. So, and this is the link. You click this link, and then you just read this stuff here, and you go to your myoffice.mdc.edu. Tells you what you get with the Mac and what you get with the PC. All right. All right. So that's that one. Let's see. That's the library. And then finally, wait. Finally, MDC tutoring. Uh, we don't offer tutoring at the Homestead campus for programming classes. Okay. Um, so, but you know, there are tons of sites 
if you go, if you just as an example, come up here and, uh, and just type C++ tutorials. Okay. So, you know, there are tons and tons of links, right? You can just, but some good school, some good places are the W3 school site's always good. Geeks for Geeks is always good. C++ is very good, okay? Uh, software testing help is good. Tutorial for beginners, C++. Look, full course, okay? I mean, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that you can get online to help you. And you need to do stuff like that, okay? All right. Um, so I'm going to end our video now. Have a great day. I shall see you in class. Bye.